Okay, uh, we're going to go over the notes for today. I'm going to do a little bit of the um, warm up, talk about um, trig functions, and then get into the chain rule. So those those are our ideas for today. Let's go to our show screen. So our warm up this morning was a little bit of a review. It says the itsy bitsy spider climbed up a water spout. Its sight along the vertical path is shown in the table below. Assuming h of x is a continuous function, does there exist a value c for the interval one to five such that h of c equals six? Justify your answer. Okay, so this is going to be an IVT, an intermediate value theorem. So in other words, the way you got to rem remember this is in order to use the intermediate value theorem, first thing we need to say is that in this case, we are going to say that the function is stated as continuous. That's the first thing we got to either prove that or it's or state that it's continuous. So this is stated as continuous, which is nice. The next thing we need to do is we need to look at the values of the endpoints. So in this case, the interval from one to five, we're gonna look at f of one, f of one is 5.25, f of five is 6.5. And we can say that six is gonna be, that value we're looking at here, is between 5.25 and 6.5. And we can say since f, I'm sorry, in this case, h of c, equals six is between h of one and h of five. It really should be h, it's not s, h, h. Um, by the intermediate value theorem, there exists a value c such that h of c equals six. Okay, so we got to do, the big thing is you got to prove continuous. You got to talk about the endpoints. You got to talk about the number we're looking for being in between and then state by intermediate value theorem. Okay, next thing, approximate the table. Use the table to approximate h prime. h prime is the derivative, it's the slope. 1.5 is going to be between these two. So what we're going to do is we're going to do h of two minus h of one over two minus one. And that's going to give us our approximation. Why I keep putting down F, I don't know. H of 1.5 is going to be approximately equal to H of 2 minus H of 1. So H of 2 is 5.65. Um, H of 1 is going to be 5.25 over 2 minus 1, approximately, approximately. So it's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.4 over 1. So it's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.4. And we're going to say feet per minute units of measure. So that's what our slope is between there. So the derivative of that is h prime. Now, derivatives of trig functions. Let's talk about them. The ones I've given you so far, I've given you these first two. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. I want to add some other ones on here. Um, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. Derivative of cosecant, negative cosecant cotangent. Big thing I want you to look at, just the way to remember these. Anything that begins with a C always has a negative sign in front of it. Um, so it just helps you remember cosine, cosecant, cotangent, all are negative derivatives. The other ones are not. I, you could derive these if you wanted to. If you wanted to derive tangent, you could derive it um, because if you look at it this way, that f of x is tangent x. Well, tangent x is sine x over cosine x. So again, if you want to use the, um, to find the derivative quotient rule, quotient rule is going to be u, we need to use and we need d primes. It's low D high, less high D low, draw the line down below, denominator squared will go, or what Mr. Mike is singing, the twinkle, twinkle, little star. So again, U is going to be sine X. U prime is going to be cosine X. So this is my U. This is my V. V is going to be cosine X. V prime is going to be negative sine X. So F prime is going to be low D high, less high D low. And then the denominator squared, the denominator squared is going to be v squared. And then we're just going to plug in. v is cosine x. Uh, u prime is cosine x. 
less i in this case it's going to be our sine x times the derivative of low which is negative sine x and that whole thing is going to be over cosine x the whole thing squared that's going to become cosine squared x plus because the negative times a negative is a positive sine squared x over cosine squared x cosine plus sine is an identity it equals one so that's one over cosine squared x which is in fact if we rewrite it secant squared x so that's where that comes from so those are your trig functions um just need to memorize them i mean there's six of them you just need to memorize you're, you're going to add that to remember that the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x the derivative with respect to x of ln of x is one over x and I gave you another one that's good to know, the derivative with respect to x of a to the x, so not e, any other number, is going to be this, ln of a times a to the x. So those really, I mean, as of right now, those are the ones you need to know. Just need to memorize them. So that is um, your derivative functions. So now we're going to talk about something called the chain rule. Chain rule is when we have a function within a function, composite functions. So in this case, f of g of x, if I want to take the derivative of that, it's the derivative of the outside, and I keep taking derivatives on the inside. So in other words, the power rule, let's kind of show you what I mean by the power rule. Power rule, f of x equals uh, 2x plus 3 squared, which is basically 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3, but with the power rule, I got to simplify it. I got to make it more expand or uh, simplify more. So we're going to do FOIL 4x squared, 6x, 6x plus 12x plus 9. So now if I want to take the derivative using the power rule, it becomes 8x plus 12. But I needed to FOIL that whole thing out. Um, from last time using the product rule, I'm still going to kind of follow that same logic, 2x plus 3 squared equals 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. And we're going to do u, u prime, v, v prime. So 2x plus 3, the derivative of u prime is 2. v is 2x plus 3, v prime is 2. And what I had said to you is that this guy is going to be u, v prime, plus u prime, v. So it's u, 2x plus 3 times v prime, which is 2, plus u prime, which is 2, times 2x plus 3. And when I expand that, I'm going to get 8x plus 12 as well. Okay. Well, the chain rule is another way to do it. I don't need to simplify. I can just jump right to the end. And the way I do it is this. Imagine what this is going to be is imagine that I just said that u was going to equal 2x plus 3. So I'm just going to say that f of x or f of something, f of u, is going to equal u to the u squared. You would just say that's 2u times the derivative of u. So what we're going to do on this one is use the chain rule. So f prime of x becomes 2 times 2x plus 3. Drop that guy by 1. Times, we're going to take the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative of 2x plus 3 is 2. So 2 times 2 gives me 4 times 2x plus 3. That gives me 8x plus 12. It's just a shorter way of doing the same problem. So um, again, I'm just going to do a few of these examples so that you have them. f of x equals 2x plus 3 to the 7th. I'm going to use the chain rule. 7 comes up front, 2x plus 3 to the 6th power times the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of what's inside is 2. So technically, I can leave it like that. 14 times 2x plus 3 to the 6th. Okay, this guy can be rewritten. g of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 7 to the 1 half. So g prime of x is going to equal chain rule, uh, the power rule. 1 half comes up front. 1 half to the x squared plus 3x plus 7. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half times the derivative of what's inside x squared's derivative, power rule is 2x, 3x is 3. There's our derivative. Um, this is a very common one. We're going to look at y prime. 
the derivative of e to the x is e to the x or e to the 3x in this case times the derivative of this guy up top and the derivative of 3x is 3. So this y prime is equal to 3e e to the 3x. Okay, I want to show you how we rewrite this. Get in, in the habit of understanding that this is how this is written. This means that cosine to the fifth is that whole thing to the fifth. So now what we do for h prime, bring the five up front, cosine of five x squared minus three. Now I got to take the derivative of this whole thing inside. So I'm going to be doing the chain rule a few times. So I'm going to be multiplying this times. The derivative of cosine is negative sine five x squared minus three. And I got a chain rule again. I'm taking the derivative of what's inside times derivative of that is 10x. So if I really wanted to clean this guy up, 5 times 10x times negative is going to give me negative 50x cosine. I'm oh, sorry, this is to the fourth power. Drop that. You got to drop that. So cosine to the fourth, 5x squared minus 3 times sine. 5x squared minus 3. That's the chain rule. Okay, so um, walk through the next example. So first thing I got to do is find the derivative because in order to find the tangent, I got to find the value of the derivative at 0. So y prime is going to equal the derivative of sine is cosine pi e to the x. But then I need to take the derivative of that. The derivative of pi e to the x is going to be pi e to the x because it's that pi is just a constant. And the derivative of x is 1, so I could technically take the chain rule again and be just times 1. But now this tells me that the derivative is equal to pi e to the x times cosine pi e to the x. But now I need to figure out the value of y prime when x is 0. So this is going to be pi e to the 0 times cosine pi e to the 0. So that's going to be e to the 0 is um, 1. So that's pi times the cosine of pi. Cosine of pi, what we're doing, we're coming down to the other side. Cosine of pi is going to be negative 1. So that tells me the value there is negative pi. So that's the slope. Now I also need to figure out the value of the point the value of the point itself. So what I'm going to do is plug in zero here. And this is going to give me the sine of pi. And the sine of pi is zero. So that tells me that this point is zero comma zero, the origin. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus zero equals m, which is negative pi, x minus zero. And that's acceptable. Don't need to simplify it anymore. You could if you wanted to. I mean, the simplified version of this is y equals negative pi x. That's what it really is. But this would be acceptable. So that's um, chain rule doing a little bit of a review. We're going to keep going. Just going to power through and get as many of these done as I can. Taking the derivative. The derivative of the ln of x is 1 over whatever's inside. So 1 over x cubed. But I need to multiply that times the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So this is technically 3x squared over x cubed. On a multiple choice, this guy's answer would be 3 over x because x squared cancels out. Okay, um, let me make this easy. The ln of e to the x is x. The ln of e is their inverse function, so they cancel out. So if I want to do y prime, that guy's answer is 1. Um, if I wanted to use the uh, chain rule, 1 over e to the x, because the derivative of the natural log is 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside, e to the x, e to the x, e to the x, that's going to give me 1. So, um, OK, I'm back. Um, <laughs> so let's go ahead and do the next one. This is going to be a little bit of a combination deal. So this is going to be rewriting this gx equals 2x times 1 minus x to the 1 half. So this is going to be a combination product rule. 
and chain rule. So a lot of times what you're going to find out is a lot of these problems end up with like a mixture of the methods we've used. We've got power rule, we've got chain rule, and we've got quotient rule, we've got product rule. So there's four rules. So the first way we're going to look at it is, first thing it's going to be is we're going to be dealing with um, product rules. So we're going to go ahead and do u, u prime, v, v prime. So u is 2x, that's u. The derivative of u is 2, that's power rule. v is 1 minus x to the 1 half. So now here's the thing. The derivative of this is power rule, 1 half, 1 minus x to the negative 1 half. But here's the thing. we got to take the derivative of what's inside times negative 1. So this is going to be negative 1 half, 1 minus x to the negative 1 half. So now when I go to do the derivative, the derivative according to the uh, product rule is uv prime plus u prime v. And now we substitute. So u is 2x. v prime is that god awful expression, negative 1 half. Uh, 1 minus x to the negative 1 half. Plus u prime is 2. And v is 1 minus x to the 1 half. So there is our formula for our derivative. So now it's asking me to find g prime of negative 3. So what I need to do is I need to plug in negative 3 to all of these guys. So negative 3, negative 1 half, 1 minus negative 3. So negative 1 half plus 2 times 1 minus negative 3 to the 1 half. Now, again, from the world of um, College Board, that would be acceptable on an FRQ. But if we needed to simplify it, we're going to do 2 times negative 3 times negative 1 half. So that's negative 6 times negative 1 half. That's going to be 3. 1 minus negative 3 is 4. 4 to the negative 1 half is bring it down to the denominator square root. This becomes 1 half. 3 times 1 half plus 2 times, and what we're looking at is 4 to the 1 half, 2. So this becomes 3 halves plus 4, which in actuality is 11 halves using um, addition of fractions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> tables. Another way we present this is we do it algebraically. We do it tables and we're going to do it graph wise. So we got a table to read up top. F prime of X is going to equal twice G of X. But then we have to use the chain rule derivative of what's inside G of X. And what it's asking me is to find F prime of four. So that's twice G of four times G prime of four which is equal to twice three times negative two. So that's going to be negative 12. Same idea, f of x equals h of x to the one half. So f prime of x is going to equal one half h of x to the negative one half times h prime of x. So f prime of four is going to equal one half h of four to the negative one half times h prime of four. One half h of h of four is nine. Nine to the one half is a square root function, but it's down below, so this becomes one third times h prime of four is five. That's one sixth times five. That guy's answer is 5 6. And I just realized, uh, am I sharing the screen? No, I'm not sharing the screen. I forgot I'm not sharing the screen. Okay, so um, let me go back and kind of walk through this again. So, what I did is I did the whole product rule here, simplified it down to 11 halves. So, again, what happens is I'm going to use the product rule. So, 2x, u prime is 2. V is 1 minus x to the 1 half, V prime, using the power rule, 1 half, 1 minus x to the negative 1 half. But then I need to do the um, chain rule inside, the derivative of 1 minus x, derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of negative x is negative 1. So it simplifies to this. And then I just plug and choke. Um, I'll give you a second to kind of look at those as I go back over them again. 
I'll walk through the last one. This is kind of a very popular example of the um, chain rule. It's a composite function. This becomes h prime of g of x times g prime of x. That's our composite function. So we take the derivative of the outside and then work our way in. So that tells me that f prime of 4 is going to equal h prime of g of 4 times g prime of 4. So g of 4 is 3. So g of 4 is 3. So that becomes h, of, h prime of 3. g prime of 4 is negative 2. h prime at 3 is negative 3 times negative 2. And that's going to give me 6. And then last but not least, tables. So we have a function f of x, h of x equals f of 2x squared minus x. Um, find the slope of the line tangent to the graph h at the point where x equals negative 1. So what we need to do is we need to first find the derivative of h prime of x. Derivative of h prime of x is going to be f prime of 2x squared minus x. Chain rule. Got to take the derivative of what's inside. So derivative of 2x squared is 4x minus 1. So if I want to figure out the slope at h prime of 1, because I'm sorry, negative 1, what I'm going to need to do is f prime of 2 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1 times 4 times negative 1 minus 1. So this is going to become, um, in this case, uh, f prime, negative 1 squared is 2. 2 minus negative 1 is 3 times 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 minus 1. That's going to be times negative 5. Now, this right here says f prime at 3. f prime at 3 is this right here. It's not 2. That's f of 3. f of 3 equals 2. f prime of 3, it says, what is the slope here? So f prime is slope. This is a slope question. So the slope at 3, if we counted our ups and overs, is up 1 to the left 2. f prime at 3 is negative 1 half times negative 5. This would be equal to 5 halves. So again, remember the difference. When it says f of 3, that's the point on the line. f prime at 3 is the slope at x equals 3. So make sure you got that down. And um, that's just kind of a summary of the notes that we have. Um, so that's chain rule. Next class, we're going to play a little bit more with tables and graphs. Make sure we got a handle on that because, again, in calculus, there are basically three ways we attack these problems. One is algebraic, where I give you an equation, you plug in numbers, you simplify it. Second is table. Third is graph. So we need to be able to work all three of those methods. So that is what we have there. Um, please work on the homework. Come to class on Thursday with any questions. Hope that helps.